Hi, this is Matthew with RetroEdge.Tech, and um, I'd like to show you a little bit of the basics of some file management tasks as it deals with downloading files and zip archives, and then to take it a little bit further than the basics. They're still basics, but a lot of times people just assume, oh, you know how to do that, right? Well, I'd like to start from some of the um, easy to use things and then extend it a little bit further into territory that you might not be familiar with if you haven't done much with the Linux command line yet. Um, so uh, I'm in Linux Mint here. I'm in the Linux Mint virtual machine. And most of the time when files are downloaded, uh, so if you're on the web and you're downloading something, you're in Firefox, uh, and you download something, it's going to go directly to your downloads folder. So here's some things that I've already downloaded. Um, there's two library shows that are in there. Uh, this one's from Brody, uh, and this one is from Lunduke. And then I have some app images that I had uh, downloaded previously uh, for one of the other videos that I did. Um, so when you download something in your web browser, the default location for it to go is in your downloads folder. I've had some people ask me, hey, I, I clicked on it and I th think it downloaded, where did it go? Um, and so um, I wanna show you that. And then I wanna also talk a little bit about zip files and demonstrate, show uh, a little bit about how to extract them, uh, both in the um, file manager here um, and then also in the command line. So let's do it. Um, I'll go to the web browser here and uh, a great way to learn is to look up some documentation and sometimes it's hard to know what to search for. So if I wanted to learn more about the Linux command line or the uh, Linux shell, uh, the default is called bash, B-A-S-H. And so I'll, I'll do a search here. I'm gonna go to and search for bash guide and then I'm gonna search for GitHub. And the reason I'm searching for GitHub is just there are, is so much code posted to GitHub. People think of that as a place to um, uh, upload different versions of their code and share it and that sort of thing. It's a great tool for that, but there's also a lot of documentation there. So I'm gonna click on this first link, a guide to learn Bash. And so here uh, it shows me the, the contents of, of this um, kind of item here, or uh, I, I don't know if you call it a repository. Um, but it's it's just um, this uh, dot github folder and this dot readme.md and md stands for markdown which is the format that that text file is in and uh, so the readme.md is shown automatically in this uh, github web page and so you can kind of see here's a table of contents and then it gets right into the document and this documentation in which we could learn some things and so um, and so this, this is a good guide. I, I've looked over some of the things and I've learned a few new things. Uh, I'm certainly still learning a lot of this myself, um, even though I've been using Linux for about 17 years now. There's, there's always more to learn. Um, and what I wanted to show you about downloading files is on these GitHub pages where there's, uh, say, software to download or scripts or, or, um, or documentation in this case, uh, there's a way that you can use Git to clone it directly to your computer. I won't get into that now, but I will show you how to download a zip file of this. So this green button over here says clone or download, and then it can give us instructions on how to use Git to do it. I'm just going to click on this download zip, and uh, it's going to prompt me, and I'm just going to say save file. Okay, and then this little blue arrow is like, oh, it's downloaded already. Um, and uh, I could click on that and see um, what's been downloaded there, um, the history of that, and then I could also click on this to go to the downloads folder as well. Um, and I'll just minimize this here. And as you can see in my downloads folder, there is the bash guide master. And so it doesn't have the markdown, it's in a zip folder, which is a compressed. It's got um, often zip archives are used to be able to put quite a few things together. For example, if you had 20 pictures that you wanted to share with someone, 
instead of sending them all the 20 pictures individually, you could put the 20 pictures in a zip archive and then send them one file and then they could extract that. And so for sending files over email or being able to easily download something, you say, hey, everybody download these 20 pictures. Instead of them having to click on the links to download the pictures, each of the 20 pictures separately, you can have them all in one zip archive that then they can click on that one file, download that and extract it on their own computer. So that's one of the benefits. Of, of zip archives. They also compress the files. And so for text files, uh, that can make a big difference. If you have, say, a large book um, that's all in text, that could be compressed and, and it could save quite a bit on the download um, size of that file. So for example here, um, this is a pretty small file. It's only 10.7 kilobytes and it says that there at the bottom of this right here. So that's where it gives that little preview. I could also right click on it and go to properties and see a little bit about it. It says it's 10.7 kilobytes there. Um, if I right click on it again, if I right click on files in the file manager, it gives me a number of options. So this is called the context menu. And I opened up the properties, which is at the bottom of the context menu. If I want to see what's in it, I can open with the archive manager and see. And so I can browse into this folder. And so zip archives can have a folder structure to them so they can be organized with certain files and certain folders for um, to be able to keep things in order. Um, and this dot GitHub, so that dot, it means that it's a hidden file. And in, in the uh, archive manager, it shows me that because it's gonna show me everything. And then it, it has a, a YML file in there. And then it has the dot MD, um, so the documentation, the markdown file that I was looking at there. And we could extract it here. We could just click on that. But I want to show you a feature that is most easy to use when you just download a zip file and you want to um, extract what's inside it. You right click, go down to extract here. And then it's extracted and there's the folder. If I go into that folder, I only see this one file. Um, but when I opened it with the archive manager, you can see that when I go into that, I see the .github folder and um, the readme.md file. So what's the difference? Uh, well, the difference is, is that uh, by default, when you're in the file manager, um, hidden files are hidden. So any file or folder that begins with a dot is going to be hidden from view. And to toggle that, uh, to change it, I can go to view, go down here to the show hidden files check, and I can click on it. And now I'm seeing what I saw in the uh, archive viewer. Um, so you can see the difference there. And then also in the file manager, you can see that there's uh, over here on this side of that menu, it shows me a keyboard shortcut. So control plus H. So if I'm in the file manager and I press control plus H, it's going to toggle the viewing of the hidden files. So that's me just toggling the um, hidden files with um, control plus H on and off. And uh, so now if I open this file, um, I could, so it's gonna be opening with the text editor. And in uh, Linux Mint, uh, that's their own version of the text editor that's uh, um, very much like Pluma in Ubuntu Mate. And, um, there it is, XED, X editor. Um, so Linux Mint comes with a number of applications that are the X applications or X apps. And the X editor or Z, X editor, um, a small and lightweight text editor is what would come. And it's very similar to Gedit. If you're using Ubuntu or if you're used to Ubuntu, um, this editor is essentially what replaces Gedit if you're coming from Ubuntu or other similar GNOME-based distributions or versions of Linux. So I just wanted to show you some very basic stuff of how you access them with the file manager, but then let's go back a little bit. Let me, let me delete this here. I'm gonna delete the extract part, and that's all I wanna delete. I'll just, and there's several different ways that you could do that. Um, if I hold down Shift Delete, it's gonna prompt me and say, do I wanna permanently delete that? And I'll say, yes, I wanna get rid of that permanently because I don't wanna need it in my trash. I know I wanna be gone with it for sure. 
Another cool feature of uh, that's available in the context menu of Linux Mint is when I right click in the kind of the free space, uh, you can see that I'm in uh, this particular path. I'm in owner, downloads, uh, and that's where I'm at. If I click in here, I can open that particular location, that path in the terminal. So it opens it up there and you can see that I'm going to press Control, Shift, and Plus, and bring that up so that you can see it better. And then if I do print working directory, PWD, you can see that I'm in slash home, slash owner, slash downloads. From here, I just want to show you, you know, the, the graphical way of unzipping a zip file is right-clicking, extract here. And in the terminal, I can type unzip, and then I can start typing the name of the zip file that I want to extract. And then I can press tab and it will auto complete. Um, and if there's more than one file name that begins with that, it'll give you several options or it won't auto complete the whole thing until what you're trying to press tab on and auto complete is unique. In this case, there's only one that file in the downloads folder that begins with bash. And so I was able to auto complete it. Press enter and it extracts it. And it gives me this nice little summary as well. It um, shows me what's being created. So it shows me that it's creating the, this directory, the bash-guide-master um, directory um, folder, and it's right there. Um, and then it also shows me that it's, it's creating this hidden folder inside that one as well. So if I go there and then toggle the hidden folders with control H, there it is. Um, and then it's, um, is extracting or inflating uh, this file that's in the hidden folder. There it is. And then same thing here with the readme file there. And so you can see that we can use the terminal to extract or unzip zip files as well. Um, and the, this, of course, doesn't look like it does in the web page. Here on the web page, it's got all this nice formatting. It's essentially marked down as rendered to be viewed um, in, in the way that um, looks nice. Um, so this isn't with, uh, you know, kind of these quotes and um, these, you know, this table of contents and these headings, those sorts of things. With the, just te the text file, you don't see that. You see plain text. And so if we go back here and we open this up with the text editor, we can see that here we have the plain text of that. So I'll go here, go to the editor, and you can see, oh, you know, here where I am, you know, I can see um, this example, B, what is, what is, where is, where is. And as you can see, here's, here's the plain text markdown, and then here's how that markdown is rendered. Just for fun, let's take a look and see what those things do. So I will um, enlarge the terminal again with Control Shift Plus, and for fun, we will type in what is what is. And then, of course, that displays, it displays a one-line manual page descriptions. So it describes what that is. So let's do what is where is, and then locate the binary source and manual pages for a file. Um, or let's see, does it show the whole thing there if I extend it out? Yeah, I don't know. Let's do it again for a command. Okay. So then I can have some fun and say, where is, where is, and then it will show me the location of uh, where the, that application or command is. So this is where the file is in the bin directory. So slash USR slash bin slash where is, and then it also shows me where uh, the man page for that is on my system. So just very short explanation. Um, of course, if I can take type exit, it will exit me out of this terminal. Um, so that's a short explanation or demonstration showing you how to extract zip files and a bit extra. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.